This is the plaintiff, Jillian McCray. She says her next door neighbor had some tree work done on her property and a branch fell on her brand new pristine 2019 BMW X3, damaging it. The defendant's son tried to convince her the branch falling was an act of God, which it most certainly was not, and she's tired of getting the runaround for her $1,436.70, so she's suing. This is the defendant, Nancy Corvino. She says she hired an arborist to trim some healthy trees on her property. And she's sorry if one of the branches fell on her car, but it's not her problem. The arborist is insured, and she should be going after him for any damages he may or may not have caused. She gave her his number, and that should be the end of it for her. And she owes nothing. She's accused of refusing to go out on a limb. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says her neighbor had some tree work done and a branch fell and damaged her 2019 BMW. Out. But the defendant says, blame the arborist, not her. It it's the case of welcome to the small claims Let's court branch. Thank you, Douglas. Julian McRae, okay. you live in a co-op that borders uh, Ms. Corvino's property, correct? Yes. Yes. Is that your home? Yes. Okay. And there are a series of trees just along that border on your property. Yes. Then there's a retaining wall that belongs to you or to the co-op? It's hard to say. I mean, okay, so there's a retaining wall, yes. somebody's wall. And then your car and many others park along that retaining wall. Let's yes. see if we've got a picture of this. So what happened? So on um, August 1st, I'm a teacher. I was home for the summer. On August 1st, I came out. I noticed that there was a branch um, next to my car. I then walked over and noticed that there was also a dent on the top of um, my door. And so I alerted my maintenance people at my building. They said that there was an arborist who was working on Ms. Corvino's property that, at that day. Time. Okay, that there was at that time? earlier that day. Okay. And then he was able, the, my maintenance guy was able to give me her number. Okay. So then I called her. And how did your maintenance guy have the neighbor's number? Um, apparently a tree had fallen, I don't know if it was a couple of weeks before from her property onto another neighbor's car. And so he just happened to have the number from that interaction. The place where you park, is that co-op property? Yes. Why doesn't your co-op chop from the floors to the heavens and... So the, my co-op has done maintenance on the trees. So they do, yes, they do have... So how did this happen then? There had to have been overhanging tree. There, I think that because the growth is so large and, and I have pictures... Right, but try, and, well, yeah, I'm gonna see your... The, you, there are video. pictures you put into evidence, but then there's pictures you brought me today that aren't in, in the Dropbox. So video. let me see the pictures you brought today. And are those in your phone? They are, yes. I'll pull up the video because it, it just shows the scope of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what am I looking so at? So if, if you press play, oh, that okay. way you can see, that's as I end, at exit. Okay. And I took that this morning, so that's my car parked there. So these are very big trees, and they're practically a, a hedge all along the property line, right? Yes, I would say, yes. It must be hard to keep that always trimmed. So had there been someone there cutting uh, yes. on that day? Yes, actually it was on the 31st, because I have a bill from the, um, the tree company. Do you, is your recollection that she called you right away the same day? Yes, I think okay. so, yes. Okay, and I, then she- I'm sorry for being vague. No, I that's had, all right. Uh, yeah. and, and so uh, do you contact the tree trimmer? I did, I also told Ms. McRae and gave her the information of the tree company. I, w I said I was very sorry that happened to you, and that he's insured, fully insured and fully licensed. I paid a lot of money to have that right. tree removed. So therefore, too much money, actually. Right. So, um, but also the location of the tree. I mean, it could have happened. I I'm not a... I don't know if there's anybody else's trees around there. Let me see all the... All along the edge. And right, there's trees all along the edge, but aren't those all yours? It's hard to say, Your Honor. Okay, I do you have that. pictures of the area? I do have pictures, and I'll show you where. Now, I do want to say that the tree 
Okay, so that's the damage I'm looking at right there. Yes. Right? So yes. a branch apparently falls there and then what? Shatters on the ground? It's on the ground, yes. And I have video also from that day when I went out to look at it. There. So that's the branch we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. And that's exactly how my car was parked. I didn't move it. That's the video from the day. I mean, those, that's, those are the trees next to your property. Yes, but that wasn't the, the trees that were cut were not along that line, it was in my yard. Do you have any proof from the arborist of what you're saying? I don't have that, I don't know, you, you spoke to him. I spoke to the arborist and, and what did he, he say? said the same thing. He said, I was not working near the property line. That's what the, that was according to the arborist. Right. And, and he was very angry that I called. Oh, oh he, um, he was very angry. And so he said, I wasn't, and I said, I, I don't know where you were working. Right, right. And so this is the pickle I was in because right. I had to come after you and figured if you. Everyone's so nice. I, but just, everyone, <laughs> they're like, they're horrified that they're, she's horrified she's suing. She's horrified she has to sue. Everyone's so nice. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy this because I don't get this warm, fuzzy glow very often at the people's court. Let me tell you how this works. Okay, okay, okay. there's two things going on here from yes. what I can tell. One of them is, she's absolutely right legally. If the issue here were you hired an arborist, the arborist was negligent, um, that side can't tell that side, go sue my arborist, because they didn't contract with your arborist. And so they are right to sue you. You get to then sue your arborist and say, hey, uh, you're licensed and insured, you did this, whatever. Else. But the first thing that has to happen for that to happen is I have to have evidence that it was something the arborist did. You know, I'm looking at this and it looks like a fallen limb. It doesn't look like a clean cut. I'm look like I stopped the video right there, you know, to see, to try to figure out whether this was a limb that fell or a clean cut. Yeah. I do have um, like the weather report because it, no, it we, we talked, it was fine. Second. Talk it to was, me guys. You guys could talk okay. to each other before you came to me. <laughs> no. There was, there was no rain. There was no inclement weather. Like there was nothing else to essentially provoke this to happen. Um, there were- How many times has this happened before? It's happened to a number of my neighbors. Okay, have you, I, I, I you've sorry. never been alerted to this? Well, no, I mean, I had, like Ms. McCray said, a few, maybe last month, there was a tree that fell on my neighbor's car and I was never alerted that there was anything wrong with the tree, but however, it was my tree. So I called my insurance immediately. And they were, and uh, the neighbor, I don't know if you spoke to him, he was Is that a, did that happen to the neighbor's car before your car or after? Yeah, before, way before, a okay. while ago. And he was lovely, he appreciated that I was right on it. I know, but it's true. I know, it's like, <laughs> I wanna live there so badly. We are so neighborly. No, yeah. so, <laughs> although I never met Mr. Craig. Well. So, I, he was very grateful. I went through the insurance. That was no problem. Where was your neighbor's event? Is it that was actually closer to the entrance yes. of the driveway? It was okay. um, probably six spots in front of mine. I will tell you the day of, so that branch is there, but the video also shows because there were shavings, right? I don't know if the arborist, after he cut down the tree, was then blowing you know, the yeah, shavings but, away. He can't, he's, the I blower's know. powerful, but it's not that powerful. I, I can't there, blow that branch I saw way up over a 10-foot wall yeah, and onto absolutely. here. That's not gonna happen. So I think that the far more reasonable explanation is that a branch cracked and fell. And typically a branch cracking and falling is an act of God. Unless you have noticed that it's older, brittle, diseased, and you know, you need to trim them. The question is, is a sufficient notice that this prior na th that the neighbor who had the problem prior to you is a sufficient notice? Look, all, all of these trees are here; they're they all need to be trimmed, and so you should trim them. Um, you are deferring to the arborist, who you pay a lot of money to. But so, d if the arborist gives you bad advice and says, "Ah, these are fine," um, that's between you and the arborist. But right. what's the weather report for that? It, it was fine. It was, it was fine. fine. Yeah. Everybody says it was fine. There was no, no storms that would have caused have a tree limb. So maybe. then the only reason a tree limb can fall is one of two things. The arborist worked on it or it was old and decayed and broke. 
So you, you talked to the arbor recently. The arbor said, I wasn't anywhere near your car. But were you out there with him and pointing to him and showing him where no. the, so how does he know he wasn't anywhere near your car? This was all over the phone. And, and again, he, um, yes. I think he was just aggravated that I called to begin with and said that all of my issues had to do with Ms. Corvino. <laughs> and um, there is no storm. There is a tree branch that either got cut by the arbors, but we don't think so. But we're all saying we don't think so. Only because the arborist says so. But that's exactly when I spoke to him. He said, "Oh, I'm so glad." You know, he was all, you know, his personality. So obviously, what's his personality like? Whatever personality he has, it worked, right? Right. Intimidating us very or whatever. Very angry. Yeah. Very angry. He was very yeah. angry, and and, and, he, he, and he did. He called me back to apologize later, but he was just, "Why are you calling me?" He, you know, then it started was, going on. You owed him more money. I said, "I don't want to get involved." <laughs> Is the property owner responsible if the property owner relied on the arbor? Uh, I'm not sure, because everyone makes mistakes, so... Well, everybody makes mistakes, but is she responsible for the arbor's mistake? I think it's her property. She's responsible, but maybe she can recoup her money from the arborist. Fair enough. That sounds logical, going inside the courtroom. Ladies, let me give you a little piece of advice. Yeah. Yes, please. As, how old? Like, are you over 40? Just... Just over. <laughs> this is just, yes. Oh, also, I, I guess this went already, right? The uh, statement. So I was thinking about this the other day, and I kind of, it, it, it's popped into my head uh, while you guys were talking about who the arborist is and everything else. Um, I'm kind of a tough cookie, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking about how many times, um, because I was raised in a, gener in a generation where you go along to get along sometimes, yes. and you don't realize it until after you do it. Um, how angry you are at whoever it is that you let treat you that way or let bully you or, or whatever else, or when someone says something that's completely inappropriate, um, whether it's akin to sexual harassment or you know a, a word they shouldn't use or whatever it is, how often, um, in particular older women, and by older I mean over 40, just to be very clear, mm -hmm. let that stuff slide mm -hmm. and let ourselves be pushed around. Yes. And so I have three daughters, and I'm trying to raise three strong, independent women. And apparently, I'm like a mad scientist who added one too many ingredients, because <laughs> my children are social justice warriors who won't let anything slide. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Nothing. So, and, and one of them in particular has this zero tolerance policy. I love it. And she's always on high alert on this. And um, I. I I, you know, he doesn't have any right to be yelling at you. Mm -hmm. He's a businessman, mm -hmm. and that's why he has insurance. And he, and it worked, like you said. That's why he yelled at you, and that's why he yelled at you, and that's why he's yes. forceful and you know, and bossy and and not nice because it works. It did, right? Work. <laughs> so um, let you know, maybe that should be food for thought for all of us to be a little more like my children oh, and wish. not let a single thing slide. Because um, I got to tell you, I don't know where that arborist was cutting, but one of two things is my opinion if you had an arborist out there. He's either an idiot and didn't see a diseased tree that the branch fell on, mm -hmm. OK? And that's why you hired him, to be out there and tell you what needs doing. You're willing to pay. Where Did you ever give me that? Top dollar. Ridiculous. Four thousand at five. That's the a five thousand dollar <laughs> fee. That's the whole point. Is that he's going I'm, to solve your problem. Right. So either he didn't spot the problem and should have, mm -hmm. or he cut carelessly and it fell. Either way, I got an idea who needs suing. Thank you. But. 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 What you have to understand is that it's never her obligation to sue him. She didn't have a contract with him. She is right to sue you. You've got to sue him. I know. Please do it. Mm -hmm. OK? If I can come back to you, I will. No. <laughs> you are always welcome here, darling. But I kind of sound like I might, I might have reached an opinion on that one, so I'm not sure. I am finding in your favor in the amount of the $1,436.70. Thank you. Ladies, I say this a lot, but I don't mean it always. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. You two have tea or something, we you know? Oh, look, oh. I'm so sorry.
I never get. Wait, hold on one second. I want in. <laughs> oh, I want to hang on this because you guys are you guys are so good. There's no kindness in my courtroom very often. No. And it's just it's this lovely to have this. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Take care, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Okay, well that's an interesting twist. Uh, we are gonna take a break when we come back. Litigants in the hallway with Doug. Well, that was a very rare scene here in the People's Court. A community hug between everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'm sure you're happy. Yes, I You am. seem to be happy. But, I'm happy. And you're going to go after the arborist? I don't know. I'm you don't know? <laughs> I should, I should, should because, yes, mm -hmm. because of the, the judge t uh, suggesting that, I think I will do that. The yes. judge says you should. And I will. Good. Okay, good. good. <laughs> well, ladies, thank you. It's been nice thank having you, you with us today. All right? Thank Enjoy you. yourself. Go have some... Look at this. <laughs> that, you never see that here. <laughs> Harvey? Okay, if you have a neighbor who has a rotten tree, send them an email telling them the tree is rotten. It puts them on notice, and then it gives you all sorts of rights if there's damage.